contemporary of Peter Tchaikovsky, and that would be Antonin Dvorak, another nationalist composer from Central slash Eastern Europe, another Czech composer. He makes it big by going to America. Well, he was making it big in the old country, but he accepts a job in New York for ten times his salary uh, in the old country and writes nostalgically a symphony from the New World that also kind of looks back to the old. He values American folk music. He's one of the first Europeans to do so. Even Americans at this point are not quite sure about their own folk traditions. So we heard the Symphony Number no. 9, originally titled Symphony Number no. 5. You know what happens once they retitle it the ninth, actually even before it was retitled. And we heard, uh, aside from the introduction, the opening of the Sonata Allegro, the exposition, a rocket ship first theme in E minor, da, 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 a kind of a transitional theme, da, dum, ba, da, dum, ba, da, 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 and then a second maybe, shall we say, true theme, because that's the one that's developed along with the first theme, that seems to be redolent of the uh, American, the African-American spiritual go, uh, swing low, sweet chariot. Uh, and unfortunately, just not enough time for the development. He, he works wonders. Uh, so he's an international composer. And of course, that's kind of the name of the game now, as we even have a composer from Norway entering the international scene, and that would be Edvard Grieg, first heard with uh, an incidental music suite, just two selections, Morning, uh, both from Pure Gint, uh, and this Morning seems to have a nice uh, connection with a later Morning by Ferdi Graffet, which we'll hear in a few weeks, and then kind of the quintessential uh, Grieg, and that would be in the hall of the mountain king, do, re, me, fa, so, me, so, and then chromatically kind of snaking downwards. And it's really just a variation of increased instrumentation and a slight upage of the tempo. Marvelous. And then finally, uh, from his piano concerto in A minor, a descending major minor seventh, kind of unusual. Do, do, ti, so, so, me, do, do, me, so, ti. So add that to our repertoire.
Grieg in that evolving tradition, probably going back to Beethoven, of a traditional double exposition, Sonata Allegro, first movement concerto, with a very brief entrance from the soloist just at the front end as a teaser, and then the main theme there, so lay, so lay, so, fantastic. Following that, we had uh, the raconteur in the third of the three biggest of the Russian five, and that would be Rimsky-Korsakov, who in Scheherazade, and you know that story, boy meets girl who's unfaithful to him, so boy has multiple girls, one night stands, until Scheherazade comes along and tells the never-ending story that just must be listened to. And you heard the personification of Scheherazade in the solo violin, accompanied by harp. Maybe that's the kanun and the... Uh, in the Eastern violin, uh, who knows? But uh, that in the tradition of going back maybe to Berlioz, of you have the full symphony orchestra and just slim it down to a couple solos. And also in that Berlioz tradition, and we can add Wagner in the mix, that line of composers terribly interested, wonderfully interested in orchestration. And Rimsky writes a second book after Berlioz's first book on orchestration. And that Enthusiasm for uh, instrumental color will certainly continue with uh, Rimsky's most famous pupil, Igor Stravinsky. Stay tuned next week. Stravinsky will work in France, and France, Paris will still be that hotbed of activity. Uh, and at this point, we're talking Foray, pretty much at the helm. Uh, he has his pretty much gentle lyrical side as his through line, starting with probably the most lyrical requiem with which I'm familiar at this point, No Dies Irae, uh, and the opening uh, requiem aeternum, quite lovely, as you'll hear here, followed by uh, a rather elegiac pavan. First far away with that wonderful bass line, do, te, le, which would become so important in the late 20th century. And then with the pavan, we got that F sharp minor redolent of kind of an updated Mozart violin concerto. And then do we have time for three late nationalists, so to speak? How about John Philip Sousa back in America, the March King? almost always marches in march and trio form. March, trio, that's it. No repeat of the march. This is the first theme of the Liberty Bell as found in Monty Python. Are we going to be able to upload this? Followed by Elgar, the first Englishman in hundreds of years, well, at least a hundred, uh, given uh, uh, the last time we saw, we really heard much of them was in the Baroque, and this will be Pomp and Circumstance, which is number one, which is, once again, in March and Trio form, the f most famous theme in the trio, almost uh, an English national anthem, and then followed by Janacek. Check him out back in the Czech Republic slash Czechoslovakia slash Bohemia, and does he have trumpets to burn in this modestly named Sinfonietta? a little symphony. 